I say before GCAC I was quite shy, uh, mainly because of my speech. I just found it really difficult to like interact with kids my age. But then at 16, when I went to my first Paralympic Games, I was surrounded by like loads of disabled people for the first time. So when I came back from Athens, it's like something had clicked and I was much more confident and outgoing um, and became who I am today. When I was young, I, um, I watched Tanny Gray Thompson competed the Sydney game and it was then that I really thought right I want to win a gold medal. She invited me to the House of Lords and it was just amazing to sit there and have my idol tell me how proud she was of me. A lot of people tell me that I'm inspiring and I kind of do laugh because I, I don't intend to be inspiring. I'm just who I am and I do what I think is right and what I love to do. People watching the Paralympics only see the end result and it's important for people to realise what I gave me. 2012 was the hardest year of my sporting career because I lost my top horse in late 2011. So I'd already got Rio, my current horse, and all of a sudden I had to really get to know him um, and really form a partnership. And I was so desperate to go to London that my desperation was transferring through to Rio when I competed. My greatest success would be winning my three gold medals at a home games. But obviously the journey to get there, if I hadn't had that, I wouldn't have got the result I did. It's just a complete honour to get anything like an MBE or an OBE because we, we as athletes, we work towards the gold medals, but then when we get honoured like that, by outside people, that's really when it, it gets to you what you've done. You know, it's not about disability, it's about ability. And in my opinion, I think everyone should have the right to fulfil their potential. Now, that could either be in sport, or academics, or art, or anything you set your heart on. I think that the Paralympics showed that anything's possible.